I'm Susan Chapman and in this presentation I'm going to be talking about speaking music across the curriculum, enhancing equity, diversity and teacher capacity through arts immersion. So what I'm going to say relates to some research that I did when I was using all the arts across the curriculum using a concept called arts immersion. So often if someone wants to get really good at a language, they use an immersive approach. So they'll do French immersion or English immersion or Mandarin immersion. So I thought, what if we use the arts as a language and we have arts immersion across the curriculum? So that means making the arts the home language of the classroom and using all of the arts across all of the subjects. So understandably, this was a huge amount of data and what I'm going to concentrate now is just the use of music in several different areas as we used it across the curriculum. So I was working in a primary school, immersed in a year six classroom with a teacher, building her capacity in the arts across the curriculum. And for about six months, I was working there three days a week. And this is some of the wonderful things that happened. So what I'm going to do is just give you a very quick summary of some of the ways in which music was used in my research. So the first area I'd like to look at is music for focus. So having noticed that the students became unsettled after frequent interruptions to learning and after lunch breaks, I used singing activities, because the students were already good at this, to provide focus moments. Oh, let me say that again. Let me start again. <clears throat> Having noticed that the students became unsettled after frequent interruptions to learning and after lunch breaks, I used singing activities, because the students were already very good at this, to provide focus moments. These activities helped to prepare students for subsequent learning activities and to establish a connection between arts motion activities, concentration, enjoyment and responsible behaviour. As the students already sang with confidence and skill, I use singing activities as a starting point to widen their confidence in other areas. Singing activities require the students to collaborate and they fostered a sense of cohesion in the classroom so they promoted focus, confidence and that sense of belonging. And they were easy to set up, they provided immediate positive oral feedback to the students and that also increased their confidence and enjoyment. So the singing of partner songs and rounds increased the focus and the energy levels in the classroom and these were either done unaccompanied or with the ukulele accompaniment that I provided um, and the students could add movement as well. This helped to build concentration as students had to focus to avoid being distracted by other groups who might start the songs at different times or sing indeed a completely different song um, altogether. So it was also interesting that students were less distracted and talkative when they were played classical music in the background as they concentrated on um, quite individual mathematics tasks. So on one occasion when their teacher had complimented the students uh, as they called out correct answers to the mathematics questions, several students stated that they'd done very well because of the music. So the classroom teacher replied jokingly, oh well, I have to play it all day then. So we didn't actually test the efficacy in terms of quantitative results, but it was an interesting response from the students. And it certainly was visually obvious that they were quiet and focused on the tasks when the music was being played. Another activity incorporated choreographed movement with a prop. And this was the song Tidio, which was performed in a seated circle with colourful plastic cups. So this demanded additional concentration and also required the class to work in a synchronised way. So there's a great deal of pride and belonging in having it perfectly synchronised and as a class working through all the difficult aspects of that task. So sometimes it required listening when parts were left out and they had to sing that part in their head. Other times it required coordination with the hands and the singing and body percussion. And it was just generally a really fun activity which the students could use to manipulate all the different musical elements, you know, such as pitch and rhythm and texture. So it was a lot of fun. Part of an arts immersion approach is to push back against the idea that music only belongs in the music room. 
So having noticed that several students learn the piano outside of school time, I decided to offer interested students an extension opportunity to join a performance group. So these groups rehearsed in the lunch hour. And initially, I suggested just to one student that we could play a duet together. And then that student asked if two other friends of his could also be invited. And then the music teacher decided to join us. So one of the things I'd done early on was asking the teacher whose class I worked in if she could bring her keyboard to school so that we could have a keyboard in the classroom. So this was considered a natural activity. That musical instruments would, of course, just be in a generalist classroom and not just hidden away in the music classroom. So because we had the keyboard there, and we also had access to other keyboards in the music room, which we had permission to use, I brought several pieces of duet music to school and the students selected all their favourites. So they had a waltz and um, do re mi, the sound of music from the musical of the same name. And they were able to show the, their music skills and gain respect from their peers, as well as raising the bar in terms of music performance skills. So that was really helpful. The classroom teacher collected the results from students' online mathematics testing to determine where their weaknesses were. The data was represented by a coding system of three colours, red for areas of significant weakness. The data revealed that one area in the red category was sequences and patterning. To address this area of concern, I created M&M worksheets which used music and mathematics to show patterns. In this way, numeracy was embedded across two subjects and connections were strengthened by showing how patterns could be expressed using different semiotic systems, through numbers and through music notation. Students' enthusiasm in reporting their responses and their accuracy in completing these worksheets reflected their engagement with the task and their improved understanding. For an added bit of fun, correct answers on the worksheets were given coloured dots to represent M&Ms. The students were keen to be involved in a musical theatre experience, so I chose a medley of musical theatre songs from High School Musical as the basis of developing a performance. We adapted our approach, altering the context from a more romantic reference point, which we didn't think was so appropriate for Year 6 students, to a focus on those who had helped and supported the students through their schooling, such as their teachers, their family, the school, their peers. A drama script and altered song lyrics were developed through a collaborative process between the researcher, myself, and the students. Then over time, their teacher and I noticed that the students' confidence, their performance skills, and their memorization was markedly improved. And this contributed to feelings of belonging and class pride in a job well done. All the students in the class were included. Rather than making connections only between written words, read words and spelling, I introduced an activity to concentrate students' attention on the connection between sounds and spelling. So students worked in pairs to complete the three steps in this process. The first step was, as students listened to a recording of a song, they were asked to write down pairs of rhyming words. The second step was, students had to put these words into two groups those in which the rhyming sound was spelled differently, for example, wait and late, and those in which the rhyming sound was spelled the same in both words, for example, skate and late. The third step was that students were asked to add some of their own words to each list. The advantage of using music was that the sounds of the vowels tend to be more prominent when sung rather than when they're just spoken. By having to listen carefully in pairs for rhymes, students were engaged in active listening with a purpose and were more focused and engaged in the task. The connection between sounds and spelling was foregrounded rather than remaining on the decoding process of the printed word. This activity used other ways of knowing by accessing music as a language to highlight word-based text. We made a claymation based on one of the novels they were studying, Chelonia Green, Champion of Turtles by Isabel Mattingly. This involved groups of students exploring how to reflect the mood and atmosphere of a story by adding music to a media artwork. The following examples were created. It's important to note that all of these examples were improvised by the students 
who had not previously been exposed to this type of musical activity. A happy and relaxed mood was portrayed by using gentle plucking on the open strings of a ukulele. This was used for scenes such as the family enjoying life on the island. A contemplative mood was portrayed by using long sustained notes on the metallophone. This was used for the scene where Chelonia was shocked to find all the rubbish on the beach. A busy and enthusiastic mood was portrayed by using a pentatonic scale played on a xylophone for the scene where all the baby turtles hatch and quickly move towards the sea. A sad and melancholy mood was portrayed by using a metallophone playing long sustained notes using a la pentatonic scale to suggest a minor tonality. This was used in the scene where Chelonia finds the turtle, Coretta, dead on the beach. To extend writing skills and to build on previous activities, I introduce poems and songs as a slice of thought and I ask the students to write a minimum of four lines of their choice, a poem or a song, from the perspective of an animal in the novel. This was the same novel that we used for the claymation. So this arts immersion activity flowed on from the drama pedagogy strategy of hot seating and it incorporated brainstorming words and phrases with connections to figurative speech. In this media arts and drama strategy, the writing of these poems and songs was done by the students, while the recordings were done by myself and my son, as there wasn't time for each student to record their own. So while in one respect, it was disappointing not to have the time for the students to experience songwriting themselves, this afforded the opportunity to reflect another real world process, and that is that of the lyricist, whose work is then further developed by a composer and then a performer. The advantage of this approach was that students' work was enhanced, making the experience a very positive one for them. When the recordings, which were composed, voiced and edited by myself and my son, were played to the students, they were very enthusiastic and proud of their writing efforts. Here are some of the examples. Uh, you should note that the first one is intentionally humorous. A dolphin swimming up and down with, with the other fishes, fishes going in and out. There was a dolphin swimming up and down. Dolphin swimming with the up other and down. Fishes swimming up and down. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the dolphins. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the dolphins. Swimming up the fishes. Swimming up the fishes. Going in the fishes. Going in and out. Swimming all round the coral, fish wandering everywhere in the sea, fish hanging out with others, fish resting in the soft and cosy coral, fish keeping way from the surface. Fish avoiding the seagulls, fish deep down in the sea. Dazzling wind makes me cringe, I can fly in the pretty sky. Windy days make me amazed, stormy days make me afraid. Dazzling sand makes me a man I'm so wide I fly like a kite 